Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to Hello. start Good with the essentials everyone. of understanding the essentials of the ECG. So, what is ECG? ECG it stands for electrocardiogram. So, ECG or electrocardiography is the process and the tracing of the electrical activity of the heart, the graphs that we get, that is called as electrocardiogram. So, ECG is a process to study the electric activity of the heart. This is what is ECG. Now, for ECG, what are the substances that we need or what are the essentials for ECG? Essentials for ECG. Obviously, we need electrodes, electrodes which are like positive and negative and which has to be connected to a galvanometer, that one. And then we need galvanometer. We need a pen that is res that is sensitive to heat and we need a heat resistance paper. We need a heat resistance paper. Okay. Now, picture we'll use later. So, now, this ECG has a, the ECG has characteristic waves, segments and intervals. These are what are seen in an ECG. To study the ECG, there are usage of leads. So, first we will understand the ECG leads. Now, leads are the ones that are given with positive input and negative input. Positive input means that will carry the positive charge and negative is the negative charge. By a potential difference of the two, we will trace and understand the electrical activity of the heart. This is what are leads. First, we will understand the leads and then we will talk about the paper on which we will get study the ECG. Now, ECG leads, there are total of, there are total of 12 leads. There are total of 12 leads. Now, are all of them similar? No, they are not. Like, they are bipolar limb leads. Now, bipolar limb leads, they are 3 in number. Then, we have unipolar limb leads. This unipolar limb leads, they are also 3 in number. And then, we have the precordial or chest leads. Now, this precordial and chest leads, they are 6 in number. So, all together, there are 12 leads. Now, how are these leads arranged or oriented? Let's understand one by one, then we move on to understanding the ECG paper. So, starting with the bipolar limb leads. Now, here, going back to, before we go into looking at the picture, now going back into this picture. So, what is the basic principle behind using the bipolar limb leads? So, here it is thought that the heart, the heart is lying in the middle in a slanting way. Now, the electrodes are arranged in such a way that 
the electrical activity the electrical activity that is the action potential why we need to understand or study the electrical activity or action potential because in case of any clinical condition in case of any pathological or abnormal functioning of the heart it will also give abnormal action potential recording so by indirectly studying the action potential that is generated by the heart in the depolarization phase and the depolarization phase we can have an idea of what abnormality of the heart the person may be suffering from or may be having and that ecg that report or that diagnosis that understanding will be correlated with the lab finding and other imaging like mri other imaging whatever is necessary and then the final diagnosis will be made so the whole principle is that taking the heart in the epicenter the electrical picture of the heart is taken from the two shoulders because the electrical activity that is happening in the heart is also radiated to the shoulder and also to the pubical the pubis region now connecting the electrodes at the two arm whether it is bipolar or whether it is unipolar this will need to not so much of convenience in the person who is subjected to this ecg so for the easing for making the person easy during the ecg because the person should feel easy and should be in a relaxed and calm condition so this whatever electric activity comes to the shoulder that electrical activity will be same radiated to the arms and from the pubis to the foot because the body is a volume conductor that means it has the fluid and the ions so whatever electrical activity comes from the heart to the shoulder via the fluid because it has got ions and it has got water that is the body fluids and all it has got blood also it will be transmitted to the limbs as well so that's why this limbs are designed so talking about the bipolar limb so there are like three lead lead one lead two and lead three looking at the picture of this lead so how does it look what is the orientation so here if we look at the picture this is the picture of the this is the picture of the limb leads i think it's clear now on the screen okay so there are three leads the leads are connected in such a way that they form an inverted triangle in which the heart is lying in the middle the heart is lying in the epicenter now one thing we have to remember the three limbs that i use are the right arm the left arm and the left leg right arm left arm and the left leg where is the right foot is used for earning for earning so in the left arm in the left arm it is always the negative it is always the negative electrode negative input and in the left leg it is always the positive input it is always the positive input now depending on the lead the input in the right arm is change like as we can see here in the lead one that is the connection between the right arm and the left arm so left arm we already know left arm is what left arm is the place where there is negative input so if we write here the positive input and negative input so the left arm is always negative so obviously in lead one it is a left arm which is having the negative input and the 
right arm is having the positive input. Okay. So it should be like the right arm, the left arm, which is having the which is having the positive input, and the right arm, which is having the negative input. Whereas if we look at the lead two, the lead two. In lead to the left foot always has a positive input because left foot never has any negative input. So the left foot always have the positive input and it is connected to who? It is connected to right arm. So right arm as you can see in the picture it always has a negative input. So here the negative input is to the right arm. Now talking about the lead 3, lead 3 again is the connection between the left arm and the left foot, left arm and the left foot. So left foot is something that is having only the positive input. So left foot and the remaining, the remaining right arm is having the negative input. This is how we remember the leads in the bipolar limb leads. Okay, now coming to the unipolar limb leads. The unipolar limb leads. So the unipolar limb leads is also augmented leads. What do we mean by augmented? Augmented means it is the voltage in one lead that is the main input the positive input it is either increased 1.5 times or decreased to half that is 0.5 times as compared to the bipolar limb lead. Now, say for example, how are the nomenclature of the lead? It is augmented, unipolar. That's why a small a is written. And this is where there is like the positive charge. So, the positive charge that is connected to the right limb, right limb, it is A, B, R. Here, the positive charge, it is the positive input goes to the right arm and the negative input negative input does not go to one limb it is actually the difference the mean actually like the mean of the other two limbs so if the right limb is having the positive input in which the voltage is either made one and a half times more than what in the limb lead was to the right limb or it is made it into half. Then the mean and the potential difference between the other two limbs are taken as the negative or there it is used as a negative input. So other two limbs are left arm and the left foot talking about the next one a b l l means left l means left here the positive input is to the left arm and it is the mean of potential difference of the right arm and left foot Okay, next we have A, B, F, capital F, capital F. So, here F foot. So, the positive input is to the left foot, whereas the mean of the left arm and right arm are, take, are provided or the input is given that of the negative. That is a negative charge. So, here the picture looks something like this. Yeah. Just for our understanding, just have a look at it. So, 
this is the lead AVR, right arm positive, the other two negative. AVL, left arm positive, other two negative. AVF, the left foot positive, other two negative. Coming to the chest lead or the precordial leads. Precordial leads and chest leads. Now, here what happens? The precordial lead, the chest lead, there is one lead that is attached to the that is attached to the sides on the chest. Okay. Walk zira girma. This is a lecture on the ECG. So a orientation session on the ECG. You follow it, you will understand. So precordial leads, these are the group of leads. One electrode that is placed on the certain region, area on the chest, and the, which has got one input, the positive input, and negative input is actually from the three other limb, which is used as a terminal, Wilson terminal. So here, one lid is the exploring lead placed on the chest and mean of other three leads connected to the limbs is used as a referral that is the Wilson terminal. Okay, which is the Wilson terminal. Now, this chest lead, they are like V1, V2, V3, V4 and V6. And they are placed in the different region also. Why? We will uh, so why we will study about it. Now all these leads after we have completed we have like after we complete we are going to like correlate them also together. So here you see this V1 where is it placed? It is on the right side of the sternum. I'll show you the picture as well. On the fourth intercostal area. Fourth intercostal area. This is the V1. V2. This is on the right side. On the right side. V2. Same as V1, but on the left side. Means the lead is like the sternum is this on the right side is your V1 fourth intercostal space and on the left side is the V2 chest lead on the fourth intercostal space. Now after V1 and V2 we actually place V4 not V3. So V3 that is on the left side left side this is the clavicle mid clavicular line in the fifth fifth intercostal area so mid clavicular mid line drawing through the mid clavicular fifth intercostal area that is where we put the v4 so after v4 has been placed then V3 is placed between the V2 and V4. That is where the V3 is placed. So, after that, again V5. But we connect the, we fix the V6. So, V fixes the left side axillary, mid axillary on the left fifth intercostal space. So, mid axillary 
on the fifth intercostal space on the left and v5 is between the v4 and v6 now this chest leads a very very efficient in taking the pictures of the heart from the side this ecg is what the electrical activity it is being recorded right it is being recorded it's like the picture of the electrical activity is being taken from the different side so there are picture from the anterior side there are picture from the inferior side from the lateral side and also from the septal side now we will correlate all this thing but before that one thing that must be remembered must be remembered is that the limb leads the limb leads they are on frontal plane but the chest beats are on the horizontal are on the horizontal horizontal plane this is a point to be remembered now we have understood where is like the where uh, we have to put the bipolar limb leads unipolar limb leads and the chest leads so looking at the picture of the chest leads they look like this yeah so this is the picture of the chest leads that we spoke about v1 v1 right fourth intercostal v2 left fourth intercostal same place v3 between v2 and v4 and v4 mid clavicle you can see the clavicle mid clavicular line fifth intercostal v6 mid axillary and v5 between the v4 and v6 now all this leads they take picture from the different side so if we in like if we correlate them and integrate them we can write that the lateral picture or lateral leads are which are the lateral leads lateral leads are the lead 1 then you have the augmented lead left v5 and v6 where is the inferior leads that takes the picture from the pubits are the lead 2 lead three and a b f that take picture from the bottom where is anterior leads which take picture of the heart anteriorly from the anterior region that is the v3 and v4 and the septal leads the septal leads are the v1 and e2 so all this leads together if we look all this leads together if we look the picture will be like this all the leads placed together it is like this so here we can see in this diagram all the leads are placed in a person so as we have discussed we can see this lead 1 avr and here 5 is not mentioned v5 and v6 they take the lead lateral picture the inferior leads the inferior leads that take picture from the below of the heart like bottom like from the pubis area this is the lead 2 lead 3 and avf and it is the v1 and v2 that take the anterior picture and v3 and 
this that take the septal picture and v3 and v4 takes the anterior picture so septal and anterior they are like kind of very close to each other and they have a overlapping characteristics when it comes to diagnosis of a pathological condition so now this avr lead which is avr lead which is like totally opposite in opposite direction from all the leads it also shows wave but in practice in clinics the waves of the avr they are like not so much used because avr lead the lead avr augmented unipolar lead avr they kind of take picture of the heart which is the hollow region of the atrium so it is not so much in use in the clinics unlike the other leads especially the lateral leads they signify a lot of clinical condition they help us understand a lot of clinical condition by the change by the abnormality that they manifest you know coming to the ecg paper the ecg paper the ecg the ecg paper so this ecg paper it has got certain characteristic like it is it is heat resistant and it has got grids both vertically and horizontally which is of 1 mm square on either side that is horizontally and vertically okay now these are the main characteristics now how does an ecg paper look like so no okay. so if we look at the paper so each small box which is horizontal which is lying horizontal it signify it represent like 0.4 second in time so this one small box that has got five small boxes it is like 0.04 into 5 which is 0.2 second and this is on the horizontal scale now on the vertical scale on the vertical scale such 10 small boxes such 10 small boxes they signify like voltage in the signify voltage in millivolt so 10 small boxes means like 1 millivolt it is 1 milli volt now when this ecg is happening it has to maintain a speed now the speed that is maintained during ecg is 25 milli meter per second now the speed and the voltage in ecg is always mentioned at the bottom of the paper now in case if there is a case if the waves are large they are larger compared to the normal one in any case then five small boxes are considered for voltage like for amplitude and opposite if the waves are small they like much small then double like 20 small boxes are taken into consideration so that way depending on the amplitude depending on the size of the wave the scale is also altered similarly the speed also is increased and decreased according to our like target to study the waves so these are the essentials concept of the ecg what are the leads and what are the characteristics related to the ecg paper we have to remember 
Now, understanding the ECG waves. E C G E C G waves. Okay. A typical ECG wave, as we have mentioned earlier, it consists of a wave. It consists of wave. It consists of segments and intervals. So, if we look at this one, okay. So here we see we are quite aware of the waves. We have always like heard about the P, Q, R, S, and T wave, and also occasional presence of this U wave. So now very quickly, what is the P wave? P wave. It is. What does it signify? It signifies a Atrial depolarization. And what does QRS complex signify? They signify ventricular depolarization. Okay, then we will understand each and every wave separately. Then what does this T wave signify? T wave signify repolarization of the ventricle so here one obvious question that comes to head is that until here until the repolarization of the ventricle the obvious question that comes to the mind is that why no atrial depolarization why only ventricular depolarization so there are no atrial t wave or wave of Depolarization because the atrial mass is small. So the repolarization or T wave of atria gets buried under the QRS complex. It is there, but it is not visible because it gets buried under the QRS complex. A clinical link right away I am mentioning so that we can remember the when do we see the atrial T wave? Atrial T wave is seen in clinical condition like pericarditis or high A B log. In this condition, the atrial T wave starts appearing in the ECG wave. Okay. Now, the next wave that we have is the U wave. Now, U wave is like rarely seen. Now, U wave, what does it signify? It signifies papillary muscle repolarization. Papillary muscle repolarization. Okay. These are the waves. Now, two things that we have to remember is that apart from this wave, as I have mentioned, there is also the segment and the intervals. So, here, if there is an interval, say there is that PR interval. Now, one interval point to remember. Intervals always have a segment and a wave. Now, in case of PR interval, we can say it is the P wave. It is the region that has a P wave as well as the PR segment, the time from where the R is visible. Q because it is so small in size, it is hardly visible with our naked eye. 
so most of the time it is not visible so pr interval means the p wave and the pr segment whereas the pr segment or any segment this is like the p r segment p r segment it does not contain any wave so it is actually the straight line the isoelectric line so only the isoelectric line so segments usually represents passage of wave of depolarization means here there is no depolarization only the wave is passing only the wave is passing the current is passing that's why we don't get any upward or die downward like below the isoelectric line or below the isoelectric line or above the isoelectric line there is no deviation no wave that is the segment i repeat segment means only when the current is passing interval means there is a wave there is a deviation followed by passage of current now another important uh, characteristics of feature to be remembered in context to clinics is the j point the j point now j point is the region where there is an intersection after the s segment ends and the the s point the s wave uh, ends and there is the starting of this s p segment so j point is a point of reference to understand different cardiac condition especially clinically to understand ischemia and all this thing this j point is very much important we will study gradually now here the gap between two our wave is like one cardiac cycle and why r wave because r wave are very easy to understand by our eyes actually p wave to p wave t to t anything difference between two waves it represent one heartbeat or one cardiac cycle but why r wave because the height is bigger so it is easy for us to read it on the ecg okay another important uh, interval that we have is the is the t p interval it is the t p interval okay and also and also one more is the q t interval these are the various intervals okay now coming to the each and every wave one by one so starting with the p segment p wave p wave followed by the pr interval so p wave it means the atrial depolarization so actually how does the p wave look like so p wave as it is seen if we see a p wave properly on ecg it will not be a single wave a p wave it is best studied in the segment which is given by the lead to and which is lead to inferior lead and the lateral and the anterior lead which is the v1 okay rather septal because this two also comes in the anterior part so like the inferior lead and the specifically septal lead gives a very good picture of the p wave so this is a normal p wave this is a normal p wave so in the normal p wave we are seeing it is bifurcated we are seeing two humps two wave now this blue one this is the p wave wave of depolarization of the right atrium and this red one this is the wave of depolarization of the left atrium okay it is left atrium now the same thing the same p wave 
in the lead v1 in the lead v1 it is like biphasic so here the biphasic is because of the left atrium here and the right atrium depolarization there this is how it looks under normal condition now the second one which is a condition of p mitrally it is a condition of p mitrally so p mitrally means what here the left atrium is enlarged in p mitrally what happens there is stenosis of the mitral wall so the left atrium is enlarged when the left atrium is enlarged there is more pressure on the left atrium so here we can see the we get a biphasic p wave but here the left atrium is enlarged so the biphasic action potential that is from the left atrium it becomes little bit higher there is a bigger hump on the left atrial depolarization wave in case of a p wave and in the precordial lead v1 there is more lagging of the p wave it is like the negativity is more it is more towards downwards the dotted line as we can see this is a normal one what is supposed to be and the lowered one it is the more negativity because of the p mitrally similarly here we see p pulmonary pulmonary means when there is stenosis in the pulmonary valve where is the pulmonary valve pulmonary valve is at the orifice of the pulmonary artery and the right atrium so here the right atrium is enlarged so when the right atrium is enlarged the p wave in the lead to it is no more biphasic it becomes monophasic and it becomes large it gets elevated to the so this is the dotted line which it should be but then it gets tip elevated like towards up whereas in the v1 there is no negativity like it is biphasic in normal condition it is biphasic here also it is not biphasic it is it becomes narrower but taller and the biphasic is not seen so this is how the p wave is affected in p mitrally and p pulmonary okay now next characteristics or important interval or the structure in the ecg is the pr interval now pr interval it is very important to predict or to understand if there is a problem in the conduction system so usually pr in interval it is about 0.1 to 2.22 seconds that is how big it is pr interval increases means it becomes prolonged in case of a block if there is any block and pr interval shortens in case of any accessory pathway so if there is any presence of if there is any presence of any accessory pathway that we discussed yesterday like right? the bundle of kent so what will be seen is something like this
So here the condition will be something like this. So on the leftmost, we see the normal conduction of impulse. As we see in the picture, this is the SA node and this is the AV node through the internodal pathway. The from SA node it comes to the AV node. So once it comes to the AV node from the bundle of hills across the interventricular septum, there is passage of the impulse which flows all the way, ultimately goes to the posterior basal region and then the repolarization dies and repolarization sets in. This is a normal pathway. Now, in case of a first degree heart block, first degree AV block, which is due to increase stimulation of the vagus nerve it may be or uh, sometimes an athlete it is seen but the good news is that in first degree av block no medication no treatment no rushing to the emergency ward is needed this AV block gets corrected or resolved by itself but what actually happens here so here if there is addition delay there is a av nodal delay which is about 90 millisecond we know so if there is like additional delay in the AV node and the passage becomes slower. The passage of the impulse takes like prolonged time here. It takes like longer time than the PR interval which under normal condition is like 0 0.1 to 2.2 second. It becomes greater than 0.2 seconds. Which one? The PR interval, the PR interval, the one that has been highlighted with red line, that one, that red line area, the interval that has a P wave and that has a PR segment. Now, in case of generation of an accessory pathway, so as we can see here, it has been shown on the right lateral side. So, there has been a generation of bundle of end. So, in this condition, what will happen when the impulse like flows down and goes to the posterior basolateral region, instead of dying off, it will find this accessory pathway which is capable of conducting the impulse, which is capable of conducting the impulse. The impulse will again enter to the ventricle. So, it will cause a pre-excitation. First wave comes from the SA node. Other than that, once there is re-entry of the impulse, re-entry of the current via this accessory pathway, the ventricle will again prematurely beat. Which ventricle? The right ventricle, the right side. Because here the bundle of Kent is developed or generated a congenital problem. It is hereditary problem. It is, it is present in the right lateral region. So, here you see there will be like pre-excitation. So, in pre-excitation, the kind of wave that we will get, we will get a buried. There is a buried R wave, which is called as, which is the, that is the delta wave, delta wave. And here the PR interval, it is much less than 0 0.1 second or 0 0.12 second, 0 0.1 second, it is like less than that one because there is a pre excitation. Okay, this is the clinical importance of the PR interval. Now, next comes the waves of the ventricle. So, waves of the ventricle first is the Q wave, the first wave is the Q. Wave. So, what is the Q wave? Q wave, it is the, it is first negative deflection. Okay. And point to remember, it is not visible in the V1 to V3 lids of the chest. Chest lid V1 to V3 will not show Q wave. Most of the lids is very difficult to understand, but V1 to V3 in a normal person, it will not be present at all. Okay. Now, 
here it is less than 2 millimeter in size a normal q wave now a pathological pathological q wave uh, what is the characteristics of a pathological q wave pathological q wave will be can be up to 40 mm in size and loss of q wave in v5 that is the lateral leads of the chest v6 signifies left bundle bunch lock okay this is what it signifies and what is the q wave what is causing the q wave q wave it is caused i'm telling it remember it is caused by the depolarization of the septum depolarization of the septum that's why it gives the q wave coming to the coming to a picture of the ecg of the thing that is the q wave So, how do we see the Q wave on the ECG? A Q wave may become bigger and taller like the arrow one please note here this arrow one as we are seeing in this ecg it is not showing the q wave but you just see this is a t wave and this is like the r wave and a very prolonged s wave so here in this condition this is like the q wave which is not at all it is a distorted p wave this is a clinical picture a pathological picture so a distorted p wave with almost no q wave there is like loss of q wave so in clinical in clinically affected person there may be total disappearance of the q wave now coming to the next one which is our r wave now here r wave r wave means depolarization of the maximum mass of the ventricles okay when the major we have studied the course of the impulse flow so when the major part of the ventricles are excited by the electrical wave that's where we get that sharp picky r wave now r wave characteristically its size increases from v1 to v6 that means in the v1 the size the amplitude of the r wave is minimal it is least whereas the size becomes maximum as we go to the lateral chest lead that is the v5 and the v6 now r wave the max time for r wave is like less than 0 0.035 seconds in female it may be little less and more to 0 0.045 second okay that range like males it may be little more female it may be little less but it is never more than that one okay this range now here the <coughs> amplitude of r wave in the v5 and v6 is lesser than 26 millimeter in normal condition and for voltage criteria now what is voltage criteria voltage criteria means whenever there are certain 
clinical condition, the amplitude of the S wave and the R wave becomes very, very high. Okay, we'll come to that. The voltage criteria, the S1 wave usually in the V1 lead plus the R wave usually in the lateral lead should be should be lesser than lesser than 35 millimeter okay this is what it should be in a normal person this is a normal criteria now in voltage fluctuation now pathological conditions like ventricular hypertrophy causes increase in the voltage okay normally the width of QRS complex is like 70 to 110 millisecond that is on the that is on the horizontal scale like on the horizontal grid okay but in supra ventricular supraventricular tachycardia if there is a point above the upper region of the ventricle which is causing tachycardia this qrs is narrower it is less than 70 millisecond in ventricular hyper Trophy, it is greater than 100 millisecond. These are the things we have to remember. Okay, the basic things. The oriented, we are getting oriented to the different waves and getting an exposure to the clinical condition. We are not going very deep into it, but these are the essentials we need to get oriented to for understanding this implication in the clinics in details. Now, after that, we have the S wave. This S wave and ST segment, we will study together as one. And S T segment. Okay. S wave, we know what is the S wave? It is the depolarization wave of the last part the posterior basal region that gives the s wave now using the picture we will understand we will get oriented to what it is actually of use to us because all this waves and segments are used to predict clinical conditions right so here if we look at that picture so, this ST segment elevation or depression is used to understand different clinical conditions of the heart okay how after this we'll just see some examples of the ecg so that we get used to it for our future study okay so here as we know this is the j point remember we remember the j point that we spoke about j point is the end of the s wave and starting of the st segment that is the j point which is the referent so here we see the j point is elevated means this one this is actually our 
isoelectric line. So, before that was a P wave. So, this is what the base actually should be. So, J point here, you see it is elevated. It has gone up the isoelectric line. By how many box? By four small boxes. And when J point goes up, it also takes the ST segment up. And anything that affects the ST segment usually affects the P wave also. So, another point to remember also is that Clinical conditions affecting J point also affect the T way. So, by studying this ST segment elevation depression and studying the nature of the T wave that has got affected we make prediction about like uh, we make a diagnosis about the hard to be an ischemic condition or ischemic condition what can be the chances of it so next you see this is the isoelectric line and here the j point is depressed has gone below the isoelectric point by three small boxes okay and here if you see the st segment after it got depressed means it has come below the isoelectric point the ST segment, it is like slanting towards upward. It is slanting towards upward and then forms the T wave. So, it is like depressed and upward slope. Okay. A few examples of the real ECG reading that we will study now. Now, <coughs> These are like some real life ECG example in which the ST segment has gone down. So, this is this is ST segment depression. Now, ST segment depression is seen in ischemic condition, non-ischemic condition. Earlier, it was thought that ST segment depression, it is always downward. The segment is downward means after the segment, you see this is the ST segment. This is the ST segment because this is the isoelectric line, right? So, there is ST segment depression and followed by that, the isoelectric line after that, that is the ST segment. It is horizontal type. And second here you see this is ST segment depression because the isoelectric line is somewhere there. It is depressed. But the segment is like down sloping type. It has gone down. Okay. That was a general idea that the ischemic condition always has depression of the ST segment and it is either horizontal or downward. So, some findings are like this. This is like depressed and horizontal this depressed and horizontal it is usually it is usually uh, seen when a person is like exercising or a person has got sympathetic tone like any kind of stimulation from the sympathetic nerve this causes this horizontal type. Now, downslope down slope can also be seen in a person suffering from hyperkalemia. Okay. This is also the horizontal type as mentioned. This horizontal type can also be seen in pregnant ladies. And this one, this one, which is like down sloping and it's like having a concave. The ST segment, if you look, it has a concave shape. It is usually seen in patient after they have been treated with decoxin, which is an antiarrhythmic drug. So, these are the various examples in which we see the person is suffering from myocardial infarction, ischemic type, and there is depression of the J point, and there is downsloping of the ST segment. So, in most of the cases, what you see is that after the ST segment is like affected, there is like impact on the T wave. Here the T wave is very prominent, big, so is here, so is here. And here you see the T wave is inverted. The T wave is inverted. 
here also the t wave is like large it is like large and it is like more rounded now an exception to this is a findings which is called as the d winter sign like this is d winter's sign so what happens in a d winter sign here there is st segment depression but the type is up sloping after the j point has gone down the st segment is of up sloping type with a large with a very very large t wave which is seen in a condition which is called the d winter sign in d winter sign what happens the lad that is the left left artery of the coronary which is descending which is descending that is compressed that is compressed so it is compressed due to the blockage it is compressed or it is blocked due to the blockage due to atherosclerosis deposition of the cholesterol it is kind of blocked so patient who are having this condition they suffer from ischemia ultimately resulting in myocardial infarction so what did we understand earlier it was thought patient who don't have ischemia when they have a heart problem which is not due to ischemia they show a up sloping st segment with a large t wave until this d winter sign was found because this is a condition in which there is like occlusion occlusion it's a better term to remember so let me just mention it occlusion which is also the blockage the occlusion of the lad left anterior descending coronary artery or descending arterial branch of the coronary artery okay so when that is occluded how is it occluded because of the deposition of the cholesterol so through that narrow through that blocked site there can't be passage of blood so this leads to ischemic condition so in that kind of ischemic condition also we find that depression of the st segment which is the up sloping type okay that was an exception these are like more examples how the st segment gets affected like here this is like what we see in the v6 lead the lateral lead which is left bundle bunch block this is again ventricular hypertrophy on the left so here you see the qrs is notched with like depression of the st segment and the and the st segment is of concave type followed by a almost flattened t wave and here you see this is the right bundle bunch block this one we have just now studied pre excitation in which the st segment is depressed and it is concave it is concave it has gone like down and this is the hypertrophy of the right ventricle so these are like some real example of the st segment depression now just like the st segment depression we also have condition where there is t segment elevation where there is st segment elevation so going to the pictures st segment elevation picture few of the ecg slides that we get like the real picture of the elevations are so these are the few real life example of the st 
ST segment elevation. So just like the last example, here we see the ST segment is like elevated, like this is the baseline. The ST segments are elevated and of course the T waves here, all the T waves as you can see, they are affected. So these are like the example of the real ischemic condition that has taken the ST segment higher and has affected the T wave also. So first you see the convex one. The convex one is like the ST segment, the J point is elevated and the ST segment is rounded up in convex position. Then there is elevation of the J point with the upsloping type. Then there is straight horizontal and then there is like upsloping type changed into the downslope. Like elevation instead of upsloping, it is like downsloping. It is going. Here, this is also a real life example in which we see there is elevation of the J point and it is like concave type. Usually in the depression, we find the concave type. And in the elevation, we find the convex type usually usually there are some exceptional ischemic condition in which there is concave condition also here in all the cases we see either the t wave is inverted or the t wave is enlarged or this is again the d winter sign the t it is elevated and but the t wave is also enlarged again it is down sloping and t wave is down sloping almost flattened here upright normal this is, this is how the ST segment elevation is accompanied by the change in the T wave. Now here you see this is an example of a true example of a person who was having myocardial infarction. The person who was in his early 50s and was a driver by profession came here complaining of the heart pain referring to the chest area on the left and the pain was radiated towards the back. When that condition is she was done. So here if you see in the reciprocal lead that is in the opposite leads like AVL the lateral lead is opposite to the inferior lead too. So here in one lead you see there is depression of the ST segment and in the reciprocal or the opposite lead there is elevation of the ST segment. Say next here in the AVF there is like elevation of the ST segment and opposite limb lead one, which is the lateral lead, there is depression. And here there is like depression and here it is elevation. So what is actually in myocardial infarction, the ST segment is elevated and Pressed reciprocally. So, whenever in one lead there is depression in the ST segment followed by the elevation in the opposite lead, it hints at the myocardial infarction. Okay, this is how we use the ST segment. Now, coming to the T wave, U wave, and the QT interval. T wave, this T wave, it is like it should be never greater in size than the R wave. It is upright in all needs other than A, V, R and need. In this to lead it is inverted. Now, various pathological condition will affect the T wave. Now, pathological conditions that inverts the T wave which causes inversion of the T waves okay like hyper trophy of the 
ventricles increase in intra cranial pressure myocardial infarction ischemia okay ischemia these are the common condition in which the t wave is inverted now t waves can be flat it can be flattened in electrolyte imbalance and severe hypokalemia okay so we'll just see just for our knowing purpose we will see some beats on the ecg page so so as we see here as we see here this is a j point so we see here like here in all the leads we see almost the t wave is missing we can't actually find a like a, a very very like prominent t wave in this lead if you see one because this is a condition in this condition there has been like flattening of the the upper one flattening of the t wave due to electrolytic imbalance whereas in the down leads here you see as we discussed in context to the sta segment there is a prominent j wave and a very very sharp t wave visible which indicates pathological condition like ischemic condition apart from that we also see hyper acute t wave in conditions where there has been cardiac problem so here as in this lead that is the v3 that is the v3 lead here we see the t wave here it is so prominent it is occupying more than 25% it is about like almost 75% of the amplitude of the r wave here the t wave is very very prominent very very hyper acute now this hyper acute t wave just remember this much won't go much into details because this is your just orientation to the ecg hyper acute t waves are mostly seen in hyper trophy of the ventricle sometimes there is total loss of the t wave also t wave will not be seen in some kind of they, there can be pre coordinate not like all the chest lead may not show any t wave also if there is like condition like severe pericarditis and all those region sometime even in children the Uh, t waves are not visible in all the leads but that is not a pathological condition okay another condition which affects the t wave along with the st segment a very good example for just for your knowledge sake is just get oriented to the picture is this like prince metal angina now prins metal angina this is a condition this is like a condition this is this is like prins metal angina so here what actually happens you see a very very large and prominent t wave with a presence of u wave okay so this is seen 
when there is like spasmodic contraction of the coronary artery here there is no blockage of the coronary artery only the spasm of the coronary artery is such that it causes ischemia that's when you see this kind of large t wave now large t wave when it is a case of hypokalemia also has a prominent u wave so next we will study is u wave generally u wave is not present if it is present also mostly the v2 to v4 mostly mostly the v2 to v4 leads to u wave now one thing about u wave is that u wave becomes prominent in bradycardia that is decrease in the heart rate so whenever the heart rate slows down there is more tendency for the u wave to be prominent usually u wave is less than 0.2 point to not 2 also mm so you can understand how tiny it is it is literally very impossible to see by uh, see and understand by a person's normal naked eyes and it is most prominent in bradycardia and even more than that in hypokalemia in hypokalemic condition it is like most most prominent okay this is where it is most prominent coming to the last interval that we are getting oriented to it is qt interval it is the qt interval or jt interval so qt interval or jt interval let's bring the picture again so here the qt interval now qt interval it like starts from the q that is a q wave includes the qrs complex and goes all the way till the p wave completion so it is like q t in the well where is the jt interval like this is the j point so from the j point to the t that is the jt interval now qt interval it includes the wave q rs and the segment st segment and then the t wave also so this qt interval is like depolarization plus repolarization of the ventricles like total depolarization and repolarization of the ventricle whereas the jt interval jt interval it includes what it includes the st segment plus the t wave right so it is only the depolarization of the ventricles like which signifies the healing of the ventricle so clinically qt interval is more significant clinically the qt interval is more significant and one characteristics of this qt interval is what like 
or JT interval, these intervals decreases with increase in heart. Okay. So these are the important waves and intervals. So this class, what did we get oriented to? We did not go into very details or very deep. We got a good concept of the deeds and the important and essential characteristics of the waves and interval, which is which is important for us to clinically correlate with the various condition of the heart. But ECG alone is not sufficient to make a proper diagnosis. It has to be correlated with the lab study as well as imaging. Okay. So tomorrow we would get oriented to the cardiac cycle and the weaker system. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow evening.